Uh, so welcome back to the second part of the photoelectric effect. Uh, before going into that, let me answer few of the queries. So first, uh, please use a shared document in the Google Classroom that uh, Dr. Shantanu has created and write all the doubts there. And we'll clear the doubts uh, whenever we meet uh, after one week. And uh, one more thing is that someone asked the convention of H cross. So I use H cross as, mm, let me write it down here. This one. It is right here. Yeah, H cross I'm using equals to H over 2 pi. And this is the convention I'm following. Uh, so please uh, follow this convention. Yeah, I got some cold, so maybe you get a little bit noisy. I'm very sorry for that. So in this part of the photoelectric lecture, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to address the equation that Einstein wrote, not the hertz lenar experiment, which are, which already described in the, the, the first part of the lecture, where we discuss the problem of uh, not able to explain by only intensity of the incident light you need something there is some dependency with the frequency of the light and we'll address this so as i told you before this was probably the reverse one of the young's double three so this is the first experimental verification particle nature of the photon or the light so this is basically light I change photon and light uh, uh, I mean throughout the text so photon is light basically it came from the Greek work I think photis so that is the photon and it was observed that uh, when you uh, most of the metal emits electron when exposed to ultraviolet uh, radiation means uh, radiation with sufficient energy here and uh, the phenomena is uh, known as photoelectric emission so you have a metal surface and the electrons are basically lying there in the valence band and the conduction bands and then you in put an incident light and then they have sufficient energy they come out this phenomena itself is called the photoelectric emission and uh, what happens that in as i told in the last lecture also the different metal these electrons are actually uh, stuck with different energies, some with very loosely bound, some very tightly bound. And this is uh, known by uh, the binding energy, binding energy of the electron in the metal. And so this phenomena of the radiation energy versus the current will depend from metal 1 to metal. So you need a, a critical energy. So you need a critical energy that is basically above at least greater than equal to the binding energy. So this is the critical energy of the incident light. And that is basically, you can say that is the frequency. So the frequency uh, and the energy corresponds to the frequency well, is basically given by H nu. It should be greater than the binding energy. And then the current will start. And after that, once it is above this, this current will increase. It will, wait a second. It will increase with the incident uh, energy and the emitted electron will also increase so the current will increase after that and the number of electron which i told in the last lecture so that emitted is directly or strictly proportional to the intensity of the incoming radiation so intensity controls the total number of electron and frequency controls the trigger of this the energy kinetic energy of the electron so to explain this experimental phenomena, which was the hertz lenar experiment, you need uh, a description of light that is quantized. So it cannot be explained uh, uh, as a wave uh, property of the light. So you can, uh, this is the first kind of assumption. And this was also needed to explain the black body radiation curve, which will be taught by Dr. Shantanu. And it was proposed by Planck also. 
so this uh, energy of this uh, i mean the quant of the energy of the photon is given by e equal to h nu and this frequency of the radiation a h here is the Planck constant and these quantas are actually called photons okay and each light let's say you are in a blue light uh, it is it is uh, known by its frequency similarly red light notes for a red uh, the frequency of, of that uh, spectrum so the photons in general are recognized by their frequency now when you um, when you put light on the metallic surface the the electron will come out or not that will depend on the incident energy of the photon that is the h nu and how the electrons are tightly bound in the potential this potential historically is known as work function and let's consider you want to take minimally at least one electron because that would be the critical one you have to take at least one piece out of this so this can happen when h nu is greater than e phi so it is greater than the work function or some sort of a binding energy if your incident energy is less than the e phi then it will not come out so it would be impossible as the probability of singular i mean it is impossible because also another thing is that in the a single electron cannot absorb two photons that probability is really really small so um, okay, to realize that you need to do some more calculations but just uh, if you think of it's like one photon impinging on one electron I mean one electron and it is getting energetic then this simple equation uh, is the only equation which determines the kinematic the h nu if is less than the e phi then it will not come out if it is greater than e phi then only it will come out and then once it, it will come out uh, then it will have some kinetic energy right it will have some kinetic energy and the kinetic energy would be uh, proportional to uh, incident energy but then there is also this critical cutoff so the total incident energy you can think of is as kinetic energy plus the potential energy which is basically the binding energy which is uh, which is the e times the work function phi so this is the famous photoelectric equation by Einstein in 1905 and uh, for this reason he got Nobel Prize also and if you have read about Einstein's other work or maybe you'll be reading in next two three years you'll realize that probably uh, this is uh, the most simplest theory that he wrote and the, the most difficult one and the most uh, uh, what do I say the path breaking ones are the relativity uh, both the special and the general but he didn't get Nobel Prize for, for those two and uh, but anyway uh, history apart so let's come back to the phenomena when we are describing this exchange of uh, incident energy an electron coming out of the metal uh, binding energy or the work function we are ignoring something which is called the recoil energy of the lattice that means this whatever incident energy is coming it can scatter through the other environment right you say it's a multi-body system the metal but we are ignoring it here and uh, thus the photoelectric effect uh, we observe the transfer of the total photon energy is to the electron bound to in the lattice so it is least totally transferred to the electron this is the simplest explanation but this complementary phenomena can happen at higher energies so in higher energies what will happen the electron will take only very little energy and uh, this uh, so basically only a part of the energy will be transferred to the free electron and this phenomena is known as Compton scattering and Shantanu will uh, teach it so whenever it Compton scattering so you can please listen carefully and try to understand what is the difference from here to there so equation 50 which is uh, the mother equation here because that determines the kinetic energy remember you are applying a negative voltage to stop the electron and then you are getting different different stopping voltage for different different light so so that depends because you are trying to counter the kinetic energy here and let's see the kinetic energy will be proportional to h nu i mean after the binding energy which is the metal so if you keep the metal same e phi would be same for all uh, all the rays 
so then it would be just uh, after you subtract it would be related to only the frequency so so this question is verified by different material uh, so if you have different material then your work function will change if i will change if you have the same metal then you your you can if you have the same metal then the kinetic energy of the electron would be h nu minus e phi and you can measure with different incident light that is different frequency and uh, uh, the retarding potential or the stopping potential i already described is uh, this e phi if you um, you can substitute it here because you want to put the kinetic energy as zero so then this uh, if you substitute it in here this uh, expression of the kinetic energy so this is the kinetic energy of the electron and then uh, we measure it from the stopping voltage applying the negative voltage and you can equate this and if you substitute this to here what do we get uh, you get a relation the stopping voltage is basically is following a relation like y equal to mx plus c so this is like a equation of a straight line with a cut c and the slope slope gives what the slope gives a very uh, a ratio between two natural constant h the Planck constant and the electric charge and you can measure it and um, and you can try with different different frequency of light and then it should give you the same h over e so let's go to the description of the the graph here yeah so let's uh, zoom it here so this is basically the stopping voltage you are you are applying and this is a, this is with the silver this is lithium this is cesium for different different metal you have different different uh, stopping voltage and also the current will trigger at different point and uh, this is the incident frequency for you you see for silver which is the heavy metal it requires much stronger uh, critical frequency to take out one electron and um, and to stop the current also i mean uh, sorry uh, you can you can see that this uh, minus phi is so basically they are tightly bound and then if you go to the lighter uh, uh, atoms then uh, the corresponding uh, frequency required frequency the critical frequency is is less but what we actually see that the slope of the all this graph is basically h over e so and they will be a parallel line because that comes from this equation that if you stick to one particular uh, i mean if you stick to one particular metal then the phi is also the same and you get a straight line and the slope will be there but if you choose a different metal the phi will will be different so phi will change uh, with metal but this slope remains invariant slope remains invariant so and this is the kind of measurement of the electron kinetic energy electron kinetic energy this is the measurement so you measure the electron kinetic energy by stopping it by using the stopping voltage then you do this experiment with different different light so in new is basically different light so you use blue red and other lights and then you put all the data points in the graph so let me go back to the plot again so here 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 you go for a different different frequency and then they will follow a line so you measure uh, uh, so for the same binding energy there would be uh, some critical value but the the slope of all these all these uh, different metals they will be the same uh, so that is the most uh, important uh, lesson of this and this has been verified with different metal with different intensity of light and uh, it perfectly fits with uh, the quantum description of the light which is uh, photon and photon is a quanta so light packets actually so if you want to have energy uh, a measurement then you should have let's say n h nu because each uh, 
uh, each of this quant or photon will have energy of h nu and total energy it will be how many photons actually you can think of there so it will go like that this is a very naive way of describing thing but the similar i mean not even this description also explains the black body radiation which will be again taught by shantanu so you try to pay attention there that what this uh, description of the packets so basically when you incident uh, so you put incident light it actually does not go like a wave but it goes like a biscuit packets so yeah, h nu h nu h nu it will go like that so and they they are kicking those electron and they are then one electron in absorbing i mean roughly one photon and they are getting energy leak. so then this frequency this h nu this frequency becomes very very crucial the new frequency and it does not depends on the this wave amplitude this uh, so if you have a wave and this was the a it, it does not depend on that one rather than it depends on the new so it is just the opposite of what we saw in the young's double slit experiment so this uh, uh, with this this one week lecture now comes to an closer because we started with uh, uh, wave description of a particle and now we ended it with a particle description of a wave please please go through all the lectures and do the exercises they are very very simple exercise and even these two you can use this equation 50 and easily solve this and uh, uh, i'll uh, share now this note as well as the rough note that i used in uh, google classroom or i share a different drive if i can can't put it in the google classroom and you also write uh, the question in a in a doc file in a shared format in the google classroom maybe a class here or uh, one of you can just create a file and write the questions there which will address uh, uh, next to next week when we attend the tutorial and i think there was one typo in the assignments is the deadline was today it was written in the email it is 31st of december the deadline there are seven problems i think i think three of the problems i already done it i think it is already <laughs> i did it some of the problems are very interesting like this problem mm, please try to do it it's very interesting this problem is interesting actually in this problem if you can do it you will understand quantum mechanics uh, roughly how it uh, i mean all the properties are actually involved here these three different energies of what is this quantum mean three different wave functions and if you have initial state wave function how to find out uh, wave function at time t and also you would be able to use the plotter which is uh, needed okay then so so uh, i think the next week uh, lectures will be done by shantanu where he'll describe uh, photoelectric effects and other things so okay we'll see after uh, uh, after that okay right